LE Radio Live. Um, and hello, everyone. So I guess I'll start to, I guess, this way. <laughs> so, um, Stoney, go ahead and introduce yourself and just give us a little bit about you. Hi, my name is Stoney Godley. I'm the owner, CEO of SGC House of Fashion, which is a design house that is in-house. I design fashion for women over 50. I am also a fitness and bodybuilder that I also advocate for women, of course, over 50 to get into a healthy lifestyle. It doesn't mean that you have to be muscular. You just have to be fit. And that's where um, that's that's one of the other things that I do. The other thing is I'm a makeup artist and a hairstylist. So. Um, I try to incorporate several different types of lifestyling into one fold for the woman that's over 50, because oftentimes I feel like we're left out of the loop when it comes to uh, fashion and, and hair and uh, relationships and just a whole nine. So that's what I do. Okay. Who's next? Excellent. Thank you so that. So, um, huh? Go ahead, Sin. I'm gonna go last. Okay. Oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I don't know if everybody remembers me that's tuning in, but I've been a part of Les Elegance, uh, working with Don and Mister and everybody else, the others that aren't here to join us. Uh, let's see. I act, I write, I produced and starred in my first film last year. Uh, it's been in a couple of film festivals, so I hope to get back to that after Corona kind of dials down. Thank you. And I'm um, just ready to get this show started. Okay, <laughs> my son's driving, so I'm going to introduce Mr. Everybody know who Mr. is. That's my, my chat. I'll wait. You driving, Mr. I was going to introduce you. You want to say something? No. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> that was a good beginning. I'm your child. I'm an original last boy. Uh, the one and only mister. There's no other last boys. Uh, you can finish everything else. These people driving stupid out here. This is crazy. Right. I'm sorry, y'all. And, and I, I, I uh, want to be quiet. Yeah. I'm happy to. You, so I'm going to mute you. You just listen. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to mute your child and just let her, let her listen. Like I she said, she, she was one of my first models. 2000, uh, 2009 is when uh, Les Elegance kicked off. We had uh, Andragalus uh, Magazine first. It was, you know, Nasenja and I, we went out, recruited a bunch of models, and I called the Andragonist Boys, Les Boys, and they're going to have a radio show called Les Boys Radio. You know, they got on me because I had posted a flyer that I was looking for some Les Boys hosts, but that's a whole nother story. But anyway, um, <laughs> I started out with radio in 2009, co-hosting with the Anna Deshaun show. And then I went on and was just co-hosting on um, other shows, intellectual radio, um, Blah Talk TV, no, Blah Talk Radio, What The Fuck Radio, and a whole host of others. If I forgot you, please forgive me because it's been about, what, 11 years now? Um, the magazine and everything. So I'm just excited to be back. We got a whole lot of new shows getting ready to come up. And so tonight is just talking about what's coming up and a little bit about coronavirus. And we're pretty much um, testing out this new stream yard, something different. So, you know, the last time we did radio, everybody kept saying they wanted to see us. So y'all see us now and and I'm gonna do what they what they say when they on live. Come on in. Some come come in. Ain't that what they say, y'all? Come on in. <laughs> yes. Come on in the room. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in the room. Come on in. Cause y'all been asking to see us live. We are live, so y'all need to come on in. And I need to make sure that I posted it correctly. But anyway, <laughs> moving right along over there to uh, Brittany. All right. So, um, so I guess I didn't, I forgot to introduce myself, which is crazy. So uh, I am Lady Poetry, also known as Wordplay Bay. Uh, Brittany, I've been working with uh, Don and um, Jessica from Hip uh, Holter Intellectual Properties for a couple of years now. Um, so I'm really excited for this. We have a whole weekly lineup of shows that are coming. We're going to have a little something for everybody. So I'm really excited about this. 
Um, so let's start. Um, I guess our first topic we were kind of kind of get into is just kind of what we'll come back to as far as like what the radio starting in. But I know a topic, Don, that you wanted to talk about a little bit was the coronavirus and like how everybody's been handling it. How's it affecting your love life, your work life, your social life? Like we're doing like a mental health check in for everybody. So we can go around again and just see like how what's going on 2020 was crazy so so what's, yeah what's basically for me it didn't my life didn't change a whole lot lot it continued i've been working through the pandemic um nah i ain't gonna say unfortunately because i love the fact that i still have a job but my life did not stop it didn't stop at all um i still work matter of fact i i end up working more hours i end up hmm. on six days with only having saturday off um, last year, because we was getting ready to bring the radio show back up last year, but it got delayed because of the virus. Um, Brittany, you know, the whole ATL bus company, everything just right when we was right there getting ready to kick everything off, everything kind of coronavirus just shut down that side. But the regular punch in the clock, my life did not stop. It, it didn't stop at all. A little bit of cabin fever, though, because I'm an <laughs> introvert. I do like to go to one or two places and I didn't have the option to go to those <laughs> one or two places. So that's pretty yeah. much it. It changed my life. Okay. What about you, Stoney? How did, how did it affect your life? Well, let's start with the, the life of intimacy. Um, I actually wound up meeting my, um, my now partner. Uh, I met her prior to Corona, but I had the opportunity to really get to know her during that quiet time because God sheltered me to myself and her to herself and sheltered us together where we could actually communicate without any other outside sources or thoughts or energies. Uh, so that was a good thing. The other good thing that happened is God sheltered me enough for me, for me to live my purpose and do what I'm called to do. I, I'm a woman of many talents. I build furniture, I make clothes, I work out, I do motivational speaking. I've worked with Don as far as acting and just a number of things. But you know, when you are gifted, of course God will give you a lot of other gifts, but he wanted me to focus in on this one particular gift and it was one from childhood, you know, and it, it's sewing. And during this pandemic, actually, I built a business and wind up with over $30,000 worth of equipment in less than a year during the pandemic um, to, to be able to sew and create garments for women over 50. Because as I mentioned earlier, I'll be 55 pretty soon. And in the retail world, number one, they try to put us in flowers and black, put us in the grave, basically. We're going to give you some flowers and we're going to give you some black clothes. That's not what women over 50 really want. But at the same time, you know, some of the fashion that's out for the younger women, older women really don't feel comfortable in. We have the confidence and we have the eloquence, but it took somebody like me to bring that to the forefront. So that's what 2020 done for me. Also, uh, the, the, I think one of the other things that most people would not see comfortable is um, the deaf angel came in 2020 for two of my family members. And I know that they both left uh, due to coronavirus, one of which was my mother. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to her in one week, she was only going for some therapy for, for her walking stability. And within five days she was gone. She said she couldn't breathe and, and she was out of here. Um, I had to wrap my heart and my head around that and understand that she was doing more suffering on this end of the Jordan than the, the end of the Jordan that she's on now. Uh, another was my aunt. She was wheelchair bound. So she she's better now than she was here, you know, because we as adult children, we want to take care of our parents, but believe me, we just don't know how when it comes to medical health and medical conditions. So um, I miss my mother greatly, but I thank God that she was a safe woman. And I believe that she's going nowhere but to a better place. Um, and now I have this opportunity, which again, I've been in association with Don for about five or six years. And um, every, every moment that I've known her, 
there's nothing but great things that's come through her and with her. And she's always reached out and said, hey, I'm about to do this. Let's let's collab. Let's do something together. And she's seen many of me walk through many of my talents. And she's always found a way to incorporate me. So for that, Don, I thank you. Um, you know, it's it's been a lot of years, but I believe that this is going to be one of the greatest years for uh, uh, LE Radio and um, my company and you guys' companies, just all of us as a whole, because she's an unselfish person. So oh, thank you. 2020 is done for me. Yeah, definitely. walking out of 2020. Like Yes, definitely. That's really good and to hear. By the way, it's coffee in this cup, y'all. I don't drink. This is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cocktails in this cup, y'all, and I do drink. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Period. Dang, and I have no drink. I'm just, I need to get one. <laughs> okay. I'm sleeping. You know, I came prepared as well. Right. <laughs> so, uh, right. Then what about yourself? How has 2020 affected you, if it, if it has at all? Um, it definitely did. There's been a lot of transitions for me. Um, as far as work, I had to work remotely. So it's almost been a year. As far as personally, I've suffered some loss as well. Um, uh, my stepfather actually passed away, not from Corona, but some underlying health conditions. So, uh, that happened. And there's been some other personal transitions where it revealed some things about people. So not getting I want to go there, but yeah, it kind of, it opened up and closed up some doors for me. Mm -hmm. So it separated the, the phony and the fake from the real and the genuine. And that's the best way I can put it. So looking forward to stepping into some new and positive energy, people, things, companies, and LE radio. Yeah, that's it definitely amazing. tested that's some, awesome. um, yeah, it definitely tested some relationships, uh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Some it definitely tested a lot of relationships. Um, I know I myself, uh, I same thing, got rid mm -hmm. of some people, kind of showed me where some people really are, were in my circle, yeah. and, and those people I needed to step away from. Uh, so it definitely affected me in that way. Um, I've also been fortunate to still be able to work and, and maintain my income and everything. So um, or, or haven't had to deal with any any losses uh, personally, so thankful for that. But um, I'm just really excited because, like Stony, it gave me a lot of time to sit down and be quiet and listen. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm on my spiritual walk, so you know when you have so many things going on, it's really hard to sit down and pay attention to what you need to, and that's yourself. So yeah. 2020 forced me to sit down and be like, okay. What is it that you really like? What do you really love? What really motivates you? Okay, and then now you need to execute. So that that's one of the big things that 2020 taught me um, that I'm going to continue to bring into 2021. And I'm super excited to work with everybody, um, everybody new. Sin, I'm just meeting you for the first time, but I've heard excellent oh, things about you. So <laughs> I'm really excited to work with you, Stoney. I've worked with you as well. I always love working with you because you're awesome. And then, of course, Don, too. So it's been really good. It's oh, something that you guys said that really stuck out with me, Sin and uh, Lady Poetry, is that you had to purge people out of your life in 2020. Um, personally, I didn't have to do that because God had already purged them out in 2019 mm -hmm. before okay. the zero even came. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just got the opportunity to watch everything unfold with people. Mm. But I didn't have to let them go because 2020 let them go. Because <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> allow nobody. You right. know what I mean? Um, yeah. Don always stayed in touch. You know, she would she would text and, you know, um, you know, like that. So the people that were supposed to be, um, you know, long time present and long term present, they have been, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's really yeah, good. Tested some. So um outside of the fact that it tested our relationships, um, what did each one of y'all do to um maintain like self-care? Like what did you do for self-care and what was your routine to like um 
keep yourself going and motivated and, you know, dealing with the cabin fever. Because I know, Nasenja, uh, Stan, you was working from home. Um, I don't yeah. know if I could do it because I tried when it first hit and they was closing down everything and they said, oh, and everybody was rushing. I never understood why everybody wanted to buy up all the toilet paper, though. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't know. I like all the stores throwing dollars for the tissue. But um, I tried, so I put in to take off work for a week. I said, okay, everybody self quarantine. I'm going to take off work a week. I lasted three days. The fourth day, I called my job and said, you know what? I'm going to come back to work because I'm bored. I was off that Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. Well, I made it four because I went back to work that Wednesday. I made it four days. I was like, Bored out my mind. So, how did y'all do to um, maintain like self care? Um, I worked out at home because I have equipment at home. So I was working out, and then I bought patio furniture, right? And I was outside looking at nature. I was bird watching. Are y'all? I know that sounds weird. Who bird? No, no, no. It doesn't sound weird. No, I was not at the squirrels, the birds. Yes, I was outside in my backyard. Like I was on vacation. I would take my laptop out there on work time. Um, yeah, and meditation. Because I was getting cabin fever. Yeah, I was meditating. I was outside and I was working out. That's what I was doing. What about everybody else? You want to go, lady, or shall I go? Um, you can go. Okay, so um, I, I actually done just the opposite. I own a gym in my home and I wouldn't go downstairs. Oh. Um, that's how I gained this 30 pounds that, that I have on me now. But it's okay mm. because I'm one bad bitch and I know how to get it mm. off anytime I feel like it. Okay. Um, yeah, that all, the whole, not even <laughs> a part, the whole thing. Um, I'm more focused on building this business because God had called me to a thing. And when he calls you to a thing, you don't neglect, especially when you say, God, wherever you send me, I'll go. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So he started providing everything inside this place that I am in this bubble where he contained me to himself. He said, I'm going to give you everything that you need right here. You're never going to be bored. You're never going to be without things to do. You're never going to be without a thought. You're never going to be without a feeling or without an energy. And so I, I did I cry sometimes? Yes. Did I feel lonesome? Not lonely. Lonesome sometimes? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Yes, I did. Um, but I've always, believe it or not, Don, I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert with an extrovert voice when I need to have it. Does that make mm. sense then? It does make yeah, sense. I'm, I'm, sense. Both, I'm a mixture of both. Right. Yeah. Now, you try to talk to me like as much as people think that, and I have a large audience just like Don, um, as much as people think I'm an extrovert because I can speak to and in front of people, if you try to approach me, I climb in the wall, girl. I swear at a club. Really? Mm. I climb in the wall. I go sit back in the corner. I go to the bathroom lots of times and I ain't even got to use the bathroom. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So to speak on whether I had cabin fever, I didn't have it because I'm already an introvert. I'm already one that liked to stay at home. I've been working from home for almost 20 years. Oh. I like being inside my house. In fact, so, I like going to get stuff from outside and bring it in my house. Okay. <laughs> right. I know that's right. So <laughs> yeah, I'm an introvert, but I still have like those couple of places i like to go to restaurants and so i couldn't go to the restaurants and now i like to practice, um, i like to practice chef cooking mm, so the restaurant oh. is in my kitchen and plus see i have this nasty little thought in my head i know y'all don't want to hear this but i'm gonna say it anyway don't say okay it. so i always be thinking when it comes to restaurants that there's some dude back there cooking and scratching his nuts and then putting his hand back on my food so i can't <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm never going to go to another restaurant. You know, thank you, Sin. Unless you come over here to my house because I ain't got no nuts. <laughs> Everything at your house. You got the gym. You got the, the clothing line. You right. got the chef's kitchen. We got to yeah. come visit. Yes. <laughs> you in Atlanta? No, but I need to visit. 
Uh, Our 55th birthday is March. Okay. First weekend of March. Okay. You can come with Don and them. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> She is Shy Town. She's going to be hosting the uh, Shy City Cafe. Yes. Okay. That's Which what I'm going. super excited for. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. I guess for myself, um, as far as like what I've been doing, meditation still, just doing a lot of that, a lot of sitting with myself. I'm a writer. Um, I'm a poet and a musician. So a mm-hmm. lot of playing on the piano, writing compositions, um, writing right. pieces, a lot of crying, a lot of screaming, a lot of sitting in the grass, just grounding. Um, I, I like being in my house. I do. But I also like being outside. So I'm kind of 50-50 split. So what I find myself doing was just taking a ride around the city, not getting out the car, but like literally I like mask up, put everything on, get in the car and just literally ride around 285, go down to downtown, ride around in neighborhoods I've never been just to see things. And that kind of gave me this sense of like, okay, I'm outside. It's okay. (laughs) And then coming back because in Atlanta, we really didn't handle the COVID and lockdown very well. And and we didn't have it for very long either because there were still people outside at like Piedmont Park uh, picnicking (laughs) and doing things when we had the mask order. So uh, that's the, that's how I was able to get outside was, was just the ride around the city listen to music, meditate, and then come back because I was too afraid to do anything else. Well, I think in Atlanta, the reason why uh, people didn't take it to heart was because it didn't hit home. Mm -hmm. It didn't put nobody in the grave for them or it didn't put anybody significant to them in the grave. Let me speak for myself. I was one of those people that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I would go to Stone Mountain. I would ride my bike. I would walk around the mountain. I was... You know, I was just very um, nonchalant until my mother died. Yeah. And I said, oh, shit, this is for real for real. Right. Because when they had to diagnose her, I promise you on everything, there was nothing wrong with her when she went to the rehab center. But she came out in a body bag, and that's when I took it serious. That's when I started wearing the mask when I would go out. That's when I started putting on some kind of hand protection. But it took some someone close to me to leave here to show me that it was real because a lot of people have a scientific mind mm-hmm. if they can't see in reality they won't believe it right there's a Does lot that of make people sense that. yeah some yeah. People don't think it's real so because yeah. like you said it hasn't affected them so it's not real to them so well, I was on IG one day and it was a, a video and I hate I couldn't get back to the video. I was just, it just started playing in there. And he was saying one of the reasons why it had cleared up over in um, other countries, China and all those other countries, because, you know, they did that um, where they quarantined the entire country. Mm-hmm. And, and that he felt like the coronavirus was here to stay in the U.S. And the only he only had one answer or one explanation for that and why uh it was here to stay in america and it was not going anywhere and he said it was because of greed and i was like wow never thought of that he said because americans are too greedy americans love money more than they love life and that um americans would not um is not willing to stay at home and down everything for that seven or ten days because they feel like they're gonna lose money. So instead, if, if and I kind of agree with him, because Americans, we, we do love money. We love money. But we can't sit down either, Don. Huh? We can't sit down. Right. Love money, can't sit down. And so, and that's what he was saying. He said that was the, one of the main reasons why um, America, it was here to stay and it would be clear in other countries because Agree. We we don't have the patience or anything to sit still and to not, you know, stay home and lose money. We fear losing money. Everything is about money for us. But my thing is also, too, with those other countries, they had a government that provided for them. 
So they were in quarantine and then they had a government that provided for them when they were missing out the, the income. That's so it. it's written. To me, it's a lot. I think it's a lot on the government side, too, because, I mean, you figure you most Americans, a large percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Then we have this pandemic. So we're now people are losing jobs. So you give people twelve hundred dollars, which is barely enough. That's not which is barely enough to satisfy anything. And then that's it for months on end until recently you give everybody, what, six hundred dollars. Yeah, and not even everybody that you gave the twelve hundred dollars to, because the people, some of the people you gave the twelve hundred dollars to, didn't even qualify for the six hundred. So this is during that the whole time, I, yes, I definitely want to chime in on that because first of all, the other countries they set their people up to know how to budget and finance, deal with finance and money. They educate their people. The second thing is. Canada, for one, they gave their people $2,000 a month and they're still doing it. So yeah. Americans yeah. are not greedy. We're, we're trying to survive. And then we're also living in not only a pandemic, but a Afrocentric uh, 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 place where they're discriminating against us as well, even more so than ever before. I mean, we're living back from the 400 years ago right now. Mm -hmm. So not only are they they not giving us money, they're trying to do away with our race and our culture and steal our culture. And I mean, I can name all of these things that is is it is because of, like you said, Brittany, the government and not giving the assistance that the, the American people need. I mean, who in a freak can live off of twelve hundred dollars? That's one dollar a month, and and it ain't cheap to live in Atlanta no more. Not compared to mm -hmm. when I first came down here twenty years ago. When I first came down here in two thousand, I was in a two bedroom apartment. I had a eat in kitchen, a separate dining room. It was a uh, a bathroom like one and a half bath. It was huge. I think that apartment mm -hmm. had to be something like fourteen hundred square feet. I was paying five hundred and forty dollars for this apartment. I did not have a water bill. My light bill every month ran me about me $80 a month. Now that same apartment complex that in 2000, I understand it's 20 years later, things don't change, but that same apartment right now for that same apartment, they want $1,900 a month for it. And oh, wow. I looked at it and all they did was throw in a new fridge and stove. It's still pretty changed to some new carpet. But it's still everything is still the same. But now they won't not even triple. Probably I don't even know what to say. But it was nineteen hundred dollars for that same apartment that I paid five hundred and thirty dollars for in two thousand. So a lot of people, and I was telling some people when they was talking about um, moving here, and then the Tyler Perry ain't making no better because now they want to call it Little Black Hollywood. But Ti and them don't live in Atlanta. They all live on the outskirts. So now yeah. everybody wants run down here. The city is overcrowded. I think it's what, like six point some million people in the city of Atlanta by itself. Mm -hmm. So people took advantage. And I love Atlanta. It is a beautiful city. It is my second home. The Sandra already know. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody else that know me, yeah, I, I, I love Atlanta. I love Chicago as well. It is a beautiful city, but I cannot do the winters there. If it was not for <laughs> you, no, I would be there because I love Atlanta, but Chicago is a much more beautiful city. The landscaping and everything, Lakeshore Drive, the beaches, the water, the downtown, it is a beautiful city. But I cannot do that fucking snow. I can't do that snow. Um, so, yeah, it's not cheap to live in Atlanta no more. You come down here, you better be prepared to spend some money. Even in the hood, you paying. It's not cheap to live in Atlanta. It costs about equal to living in Chicago or anywhere else. It's changed. I, I think that, you know, like we were talking about before, when it came to the other countries, they they gave them liberal liberal space and enough finance. They took money out of the government and the government was not trying to hoard the money. And they were allowing them to um, be in quarantine 
and not worry about whether they was going to be evicted, whether they were not going to be able to eat, whether they were not going to be able to have toilet paper and Lysol. You never heard the other countries complain about toilet paper and Lysol and uh, sanitizer. You never heard them complain about that. They started making music from one apartment to another across the way and all of this stuff. We as Americans, we was like either we're going to have to kill Robin Steele, mm-hmm. push people around. Oh, well, let's go ahead and incorporate racism in there now. <laughs> With that that thing that was in office. So we have no, one, number 45. He ain't even a number no more. He, he's an absolute <laughs> zero. With a big goddamn L in front of his whole first name, middle name, and last name. <laughs> but my point being is that they did not give the American people what we needed. Then we were talking about the people that got the $1,200 that may not have deserved it. They did deserve it because at some point or another, their ancestors worked for it. And the government has hoarded money out for the whole 400 years. So if you got to get your, your um, 12 acres in a mule this way, then <laughs> should get it. But what I did not like is some of these people, because they are not psychologically equipped with, with uh, mental financing, they went out and bought TVs. I'm like, they always go buy it now. You hear me? That is true. They're at Walmart now buying TVs with the $600 stimulus. That but is true. Right. Yeah. yeah. The Walmart, the Walmart by my job, I seen people with TVs and stuff. I'm sorry, y'all. I had posted that comment up there. She was saying that Texas, um, what well, Houston was the place to be. Yes, H. So I was just posting I've a comment. Um, hey, Zach, thanks for joining. Yeah, I've never been. Yeah, I've been to Houston. There. Um, I almost was gonna live there. Back before I came back down here in 2015, y'all had a job, office, everything, good money. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of like too spaced out for me, and I ended up coming back to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I was at Fort Hood, though, so Colleen is, is a beautiful city, and so is Austin. Houston was kind of too spread out for me. Is it slow? Beautiful. Is Houston slow compared to Chicago? Yeah, mm-hmm. Atlanta's slow compared to Chicago. Well, yeah, I know Atlanta is. So it's- thin. Yes. For you, what do you think about, because you had kind of touched on, I guess, in your city, they're buying irrelevant stuff with their stimulus. But do you think it's even enough to really now I invested in my business, but that's I have a business mindset. But in your city, do you think that they were psychologically stimulated enough not to do what they not to make the choice that they made because I mean, where are you going to take that TV when they open up um, the government for them to do the evictions? I don't think they were mentally ready or have the mindset. Like you said, I and you invested in yourself, but this is what they do when they get the refunds. Some of the people, this is what they look forward to all year is a refund. And when they get their refund, what do they go do? They go buy TVs, they go buy Jordans. They go buy these frivolous things. They don't buy stocks. They don't invest in companies. Oh, let me set up my retirement. People don't think like that. So why would they think about it for, with a stimulus check? So I have a question, if y'all don't mind me asking. Through this pandemic, have your financial mindset changed? Yes. Yes. Because one particular day, I had a meeting over here brainstorming about businesses and having multiple streams of revenue coming in besides my my job, because that's not it. So, I mean, I've been thinking about this for years, but like you said, I'm sitting here in the house and I'm like, okay, I need to make this happen. I need to put it in motion instead of just talking about it year after year. So, I can relate to what you said about you sat down, but you actually got your businesses going. But I started researching and trying to put things in motion. So. See, it hasn't it hasn't changed my mindset around money. It, it's just confirmation because I've always been the one that there's multiple. I've always had to 
seen that vision of having multiple incomes, like multiple streams of income, because as 2020 taught a lot of people, having one stream of income is very close to having zero. Because once that one's gone, that's it. And so it was confirmation to me. It was also confirmation to a lot of my friends where I've had multiple conversations like, hey, sis, bro, you need to start that business, start that blog, start this, start that. So then 2020 hit and now it's, oh, well, B, um, can you help me with this? Or what should I do for this? So it, it was confirmation for me and a lot of other people. And so I'm glad. Like, I don't think 2020 was like this horrible, oh my God, we went to hell thing. I actually thought it did a lot of good for a lot of people because it gave people that jolt start to be thinking, okay, well, maybe I need to do just more. Like what I'm doing is not working. I need to change. Mm -hmm. I think also the from the 2016 to the 2020, one of the statements that that frog made was, I'm going to make America great again. And I mm. must pat his dumb head, dumb ball head ass on the head because he did it. <laughs> the way that he made America great again is he turned every country against America so that you would go into business for yourself because now Americans had to depend on Americans. But this is the other thing that I say through that pandemic, there was a lot of black women and a lot of black men and a lot of black children that started businesses. So I'm saying, are yep. we advocating to continue to support black businesses now that he done made America great again? Cause he sure made it great. <laughs> he made it great for me. Cause I, I launched a, a business of first face masks and then making this and making that, making dominoes, you name it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, beans, greens, tomatoes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that that in 2020, that actually purged out new business, mm -hmm. new ideas, new concepts. And black people was always strong in the mind and strong in the creative and strong in the muscle and strong in building. So I'm wondering if this pandemic is going to push us and catapult us to continue to do business with each other. I think so. Cause I think there's a lot more conversation around it now. Cause I think before like a lot of people, they would see like their friends doing businesses, but they really wouldn't really patronize their friends for one reason or another. Um, and I think also too, it, a lot of business owners from what I've seen is that a lot of people are pandering to, to too small of an audience. So it, it's like I said, I think 2020 definitely kind of forced people into the limelight and like, hey, you need to think about things different. Because, again, as you just noticed, we had a whole pandemic. Everything switched on a dime. So now you need to figure this out. And it's no longer feasible for you to, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul. You need to figure this out yep. now. So that hustle mentality that we innately have, it had to be kicked into overdrive for a lot of people. Okay. So I, I think it will carry. I, I, I'm hopeful that it. Right. Goes. So I'm sorry. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the bus company, it um. The pandemic happened, but then we had a situation because we had just gotten con contracts with um casinos and stuff to do trips and everything. People brought you know tickets. Everything was going fine. And but the guy that we was leasing from at the time was being an a hole, an asshole, and he ended up um, wasn't truthful with the owners of where we were renting. That yeah, I'm saying this on live, he wasn't truthful. He he was. I'm not gonna say his name, but he wasn't truthful. Mm -hmm. So we was in the process where we had broke the contract with him. Brittany, no, we broke the leasing contract with him. Now this is started at in December. Mm -hmm. He was, we were just going back and forth. So we end up breaking that contract. So come um, January, he was like, we, it wasn't going to work. So we decided to go out our separate ways. He, you know, gave me back my deposits and everything. So I, you know, I got all my money back. So it was like, right after that, we had went, um, Brittany and I went out and looked at some old locations, found a really beautiful location and everything. Mm -hmm. So we had the money, getting ready to go get a lady the money. The lady didn't answer the phone. Then when I was supposed to meet her, she something came up. Let's reschedule the meeting. Boom, this, that. And it's like something just wouldn't let me go take this woman, this money for this new location. Right mm -hmm. after that happened, I was like, all right, Brittany, 
here, here go your money back. I took my money back. You know, we went in and gave her money back. We said, okay, we just gone. I'm going to give her, her her power back. I'm going to take my part and put it to the side. And we just going to wait. And we, we were still looking. Boom. The pandemic hit. Yep. It wasn't even like, I mean, what was it? Bring me like two weeks later. Everything. Started buying up all the toilet paper. And <laughs> sit down. And all we was like was, oh, my God. See, everything happens for a reason. I am. Uh, I so believe everything happened for a reason. Me too. The whole mess with him. At first, I was kind of pissed. But then I was okay when we found the new location. Then the lady was, a, she was kind of annoying because I'm like, do you want this motherfucking money or don't you? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I own our damn money. Like we trying to give you money. Do you want this money or do you not want this money? But every time I was supposed to meet with her, something just kept coming up. Two weeks later, the pandemic hit. So now everything shut down. Now all of a sudden she available. I'm looking at her like, lady, I, I don't want to rip the world just shut the fuck down. And now you <laughs> want to take I don't think so. So everything, you know, worked out. For the for the better, the um people who had uh purchased tickets, uh, I issued them a refund, and it pretty much um w- that worked out in our favor at that time because we would have been yeah. stuck in police. The casinos had closed down, the museums, everybody I made con- uh, yeah. contract to do the charters to their services, they had all shut down. So um yeah, we would have just been stuck. So, um, yeah, everything happened for a reason because I'm like, we would have been paying for an empty building or something we couldn't use, but I'm mm-hmm. sure they had different plans or something to get out. But I would, I had posted Suge Ward's comment up there because she said she had a business and it was very uh, successful even during the pandemic. So mm-hmm. I was um, sharing her comment. Um, but yeah. Actually, she, so she owns a, I believe she owns a horse ranch. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, she, she owns oh. horses. Nice. That's cool. And and that's that's an amazing amazing thing to have as a black woman, you know, because you don't hear of many black female cowgirls or no, you know, don't. and especially owning a whole ranch, you definitely don't. That's not commonplace. So congratulations to you. Yes, oh, congratulations. Okay. congratulations, Lynette. Too. Lynette. Yeah, that's my sister right there. Yeah, she's another person that fully took advantage of that. I'm going to get my business started together. She's another business mind. She's from New York originally, but lived in Atlanta for quite some time. And she's another one that's like got a mind for business. And I'm so excited to see her business flourish too. But, you know, like I was saying earlier, not only do we need to um, have individual businesses, but now that we do have the power back again, and whether y'all believe it or not, we are the chosen people and we do have the power in our hands yeah. at this point. And uh, no, I own group homes as well for special needs, seven year old, seven years oh, nice. oh, Okay, okay, I don't know about the horses. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, what are you going from? Don, you keep going in and out. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You are so sarcastic sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> but I will hope that we can we can um, collaborate and do business together. I hate when in the past so many people have said black people can't do business together. I challenge that. I challenge yeah. that that we can do business together. It's because we've been psychologically, mentally conditioned by, I'm, I'm not gonna say it cause I would, because I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm very pro-black. Um, I can tell. Damn, I just said it. Okay, we can so tell. I, I can tell. I know that oh, we can should. do and business that's okay. together. And mm-hmm. the reason they don't want us to do business together is because we will take over not only this country, but the whole world. Exactly, and I agree. So I would hope in 2021, not only is a woman looking out for her own household, but looking out for the black community as a whole and say, hey, Brittany, I need to do business. You have what I need because Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. Let's do business. Like Don was talking about how honorable 
she was. I don't know if y'all heard it in her in her uh, commentary, but she was saying not only did I build a relationship with several businesses and it didn't it wasn't able to happen, but I still have my connection to those resources. And mm -hmm. this was the bigger part of the commentary that I heard. I gave all those people their money back that paid me in advance. Do you know what kind of business that builds? What kind of loyalty and relationship that builds? Right. Oh yeah. So guess what? I, now I want to go on a trip with her because I know she'll be honorable. Right. Does that make sense? It yeah. makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I definitely gave her money back. It was sitting, you know, we used the Eventbrite and the money was just, it was sitting there. So as soon as I knew that it was closed down, you know, a couple of people hit me up. Somebody I tried to send it to and it just kept bouncing. It kept bouncing back. I sent her several emails but yeah it was just i just sent it back to him and some people didn't even have to ask i just i just sent it back because what i didn't want to happen is say 2021 come and now business back up and running and i didn't give them their money back because what i've learned is when you do something negative that would gossip man anything negative man it'll reach a million people within 2.2 seconds let right. somebody post a video right now some girl getting her ass beat that shit going viral and i know i'm the only one on here cursing no, no i'm the only one cursing too <laughs> you don't tell on me like that right i wanted, wanted y'all to say uh hello to tabitha because i want to uh hi tabitha. get her on the show hey, there, that's, hey. Hey, tabitha. that's the voice baby that's, that's huh? the voice that girl could sing I you. I you know who she was. That's why I put her name up there. Okay. Um, yeah, nah. I didn't want that negative thing to follow the business. So I just gave it back. So that way, you know, and then once we back up and running, they'll say, oh, well, she gave me my money back again. Like you said, Stoney, they'll come back. Yeah. And that's with professionalism because, and that's one of the things that I tell friends that have their businesses and when they're dealing with people who are particularly difficult or people that are asking for refunds, it, why go back and forth and why argue with somebody? It's just professional and it's just business. If something happens, unfortunate, you can apologize and make amends for it, like you said, and that nurtures that. So in the future, I know, okay, well, this didn't really pan out, but because they gave me my money back, because they were communicative with me and honest and transparent about it, I trust their business. So and now anything going forward, like you said, word of mouth works. <laughs> Everything goes viral. All negativity goes viral every day, all day. Um, it sure so, does. So now it, it yeah. emboldens people to still work uh, with the company and everything else. So that's that's how it should be. And But I agree, Black, we have to look out for each other. Like I am my brother and my sister's keeper. So if at any point, at any purchase, any point of sale that I'm at, if I could choose to work with someone who looks like me and is a part of my community, I'm going to do that mm -hmm. before first and foremost, before everything, because that's the main thing we need to start doing is making sure that our dollars circulate within our community first before it goes out, because that's mm -hmm. what a lot of other communities do. They circulate the money inward first before it has to leave their community. Whereas with us, I think it lasts what a couple seconds before we're handing it to somebody else. We need to we need to keep some of our money with us. Yeah, and that, I think that, that will help us a lot. That was dismantled during slavery, so yeah, that's that's where that comes from. But you know what we have we have said in silence for a whole year, so we can we can do better. And we, we can undo what slavery has done because we've had the time to sit with God, sit with ourselves, think about it, meditate on it strongly, see how we needed to get rid of people and rid of things yep. and rid of objects. Louis Vuitton does not live here. Trust and believe. Gucci doesn't live here. None of them live here. I want a business in my house. I want black art. I want black shoes. I want black purses. I want black clothes. I want black wigs. Yes, girl. I'm not going to pull it off because it's glue. Yes. <laughs> I want black makeup lines. I want everything black in my house. Yes. Because yes. we don't have to keep living in a slavery mindset just because it happened. God damn it. It happened already. Fuck that shit. It's done now. Let's make a new a new revolution. Let's make a new space, a new place. Let's open up some airlines since most of them are closing down now anyway. 
Right. Yeah. Right. We got engineers. We got smart black people out here, smart people of color, not only in the Afri African American community, but we also have them in the Haitian community. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of people that, okay, you out of job, out of work. Let's go ahead and create some businesses. Let's go back and create black, uh, black Wall Street again, but differently. That's, let's not sit in, a, in one community together because they blew us up back in 19. 19, 19, 19, 20, when we tried to do that last time. Right. So yeah. let's sit, sit in different in their communities because they're not going to blow that up. Then again, they might. But I mean, they're going to be blown up with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw what happened to the Capitol, uh, <laughs> Capitol Hill right. eight days ago. So, I mean, they, clearly they're not above. <laughs> but you know what? All they ask is, is walking home now. And I hope you watch the aftermath of that because they would not allow them to get on planes, buses, and they wouldn't allow them to bring cars either. They told them to walk home. Okay, before we go into um, politics, the upcoming shows, I do. No, I got it. It's, it's, it's fine. It's our first show. We We just, you know, testing it out <laughs> um and we're gonna let people know when the real shows is coming this is just Elliot yeah. l radio just testing out the online playing around with it um we've been playing around with it offline and we need to go online to get a feel feel for it but we do have some really good upcoming um shows coming up up for everybody um but before I go into the that I want to ask this question because I know Stoney over there, like my wife is pro-black, feminist, this, that, and other. The little boy who mother allowed him for H&M to wear, you remember the shirt, the monkey shirt? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I do. I remember. Okay. I, I remember. It was an ad, right? So that you could ask do one of y'all remember that story? You just yeah. broke up, but I remember the ad. There was a, a black boy with a monkey shirt on for H and M. Yeah, it was a hoodie he had wow. on, oh. and it was an advertisement. Stoney, y'all know what I'm talking about? I I did not see that. Okay, I'll yeah, come back to that but on another show when we on when we on coffee talk having our coffee. I'll come back to that because I I definitely want your um your views on it but um pretty much i'm gonna go and let britney start talking we was gonna have one person on here from each show to introduce their shows tonight but um mr driving i ain't want my son driving something happened to her i'll be over here crying y'all i was so why you know i'm dramatic i'm dramatic so <laughs> I'll be laid out somewhere crying, but I won't be on Facebook on, on, on live crying in the camera. I won't do that. I'll just be on the phone mm. crying. So <laughs> we have some really great shows coming up for, for um everybody. We we do. Yeah. Um, like I said, the pandemic, I pretty much was sitting back brainstorming. Uh, Brittany no, Nasenja no, Stoney no. I've been going through different platforms because the mm -hmm. original platform that I was uh, using, um, I was using speaker and it allowed you to use an external mixer and everything. So um, I, I wanna say a year ago, they switched it early, like right before the pandemic. It's like leaving out of 2019, going to 2020, something just happened. So I wanna say about the fall of that round that time, they changed the they platforms. So I had been, you know, spending a lot of time, I took a lot of time during the past year of the uh, pandemic to find a lot of different, uh, try a lot of different um, platforms and and things like that and how to get and to reconnect with um, Nisenja because she is in Chicago and we hosted um, Les Elegance Radio and we was on Intellectual Radio in Chicago. Shout out to Earl. Um, he taught us a lot, taught me a lot. Um, shout out to him again because he's how he's um how I found out about StreamYard. Um, so we are gonna be doing some stuff to put on uh his his show as well, and that's uh intellectual radio. So shout out to him. Um, and I kind of like just been playing around with this. I was a little nervous because I I'm usually don't like to be in front of camera, so I'm really uh stepping out and doing something different or coronavirus and cabin fever just said, okay, go live. Cause I usually don't like to be in front of camera. So 
trying something different. And so far, I think I'm going to like this. Uh, I think I'm going to like this. So I would know we're going to have on Thursdays. It's going to be Coffee Talk. And if everybody who's watching, watching, I'm sorry, across the bottom, you keep seeing that to say, join our social media, coffeetalk.com. Coffee.com is another social media page that my wife and some guy, don't ask me what his name was because I can't pronounce it, created uh, <laughs> another social site um, for mature people. So if you would join us over there, it's free speech. You're not restricted. If you got something you want to sell, you know, we're trying to build that black community. Like they said, if you got something you want to sell, whatever, join us on there. You're free to sell it, whatever. It's, it's like free. It's like it's like not a whole lot of restrictions. Like, you know, we didn't have all these restrictions on here before, but we got a lot of them and a lot of other stuff and changed on Facebook right now. That I don't think people realize, but uh, yeah, so that will be Coffee Talk Radio and that will be Stony Lady Poetry. I'll be in and out with them. And that's on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Um, Sunday will be Les Boys Radio, and that will be Mr. and uh, my son, BJ, my son, Mr., and I might see if I can get a couple of the other original Les Boys to hop in on that show. Um, and then the ATL Mix of Brittany. Yeah, so ATL what? Mix is Friday night. Um, so that'll be Friday night. We have four amazing hosts. It's really like a mixed crowd of just women on there talking like women do. So it is on Friday night starting, uh, I believe, at, I think it's 7, I believe. No, they're 9 p.m. The oh, ATL no. yes, they're 9, 9 p.m. Yes, yeah, so the ATL mix is 9 p.m., so definitely in tune with that. Uh, and then we also, well, Miss Sin can introduce herself since she's here with us. Well, I'm not quite sure of the time because, Don, you seem like you gave my time away to the Les Boys. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh oh, Les boys might have to watch I out. I was, to, I was supposed to talk to you about about what time. Yeah, <laughs> you just like the Les boys. I mean, what happened to me? Oh. My slot. Okay, we'll discuss that offline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get that together. But I have a show okay, too. Okay, that show is supposed to be at seven, right? Yeah. Okay. And my co-host, we're I'm working on that. We're, we're working on so more information coming. Okay. okay. So tune in to Don Don's page, uh, Brittany's page, for more information. Yeah, my page is it's temporarily down right now. I'm, I'm cleansing. So yeah, she's cleansing. Y'all can follow yeah. us at Ellie Radio Live. I think. Yeah. I got Ellie go Radio Live on home. Facebook as well as Instagram is at Ellie Radio um Ellie Radio Rive. Please log on to coffeetalk.com. Like she said, it's another social media, but it's not, it doesn't have as many restrictions as Facebook. Um, that is that that community-based social media platform where you can go on, you can do there'll be um, I think we're talking about doing like a dating site with it. Like there's gonna be a lot of different things all about community on that site. You can get uh, recordings of this show and everything else like that um, to go on the show, any of our other shows. So I uh, would send with her, uh, Shy City. Um, and then we have the ATL Mix, you have Coffee Talk, you have the Les Boys, and we have a few others that are gonna be coming through as well. So on all of our social media platforms, you can tune in uh, and definitely be abreast of all that. Also, indie artists, if you want music played, because we can play music. If you want to be a guest on any of the shows, you can always send a short clip bio, your information, and a picture to um, our email address, which is uh, leradio2010 at gmail.com. And that'll send to us and we can review it and we can set up a time to reach out to you and see what radio show you would like to be a part of. And like I said, any artists, if you want your music out, definitely send those sound clips to that same email address, which again, le radio 2010 at gmail.com and One thing I, want to add, I know that i did not ask don but i do want to add this again it's it's all about black business supporting black business and this woman is in business with this radio station i know she would love to support finance let me be clear financial support 
she doesn't need us, but she would like for us to help because it takes money to run a radio show. It takes money to have show hosts and guests bring, brought in. It takes money to build the equipment that's necessary for you guys to enjoy what we do, the content that we bring you. It's not about you giving, but it's about you supporting your community as lesbians, as black people, as people of color, as LGBTQAI people. So I'm sure she would appreciate your, your financial contributions, your gifts. And I'm sure that Brittany and Don will be able to give you some information to be able to send your contributions to. She's a woman of business and a woman that is uh, legit. As you heard her say, she gave money back to people she didn't really have to give it back to, but she did. So you know that she's going to only build or continue to build a quality station for our community so that your voice can be heard and so that we can speak on your behalf when necessary. Absolutely. Thank you again. That's Ashley down there, that beautiful little pic. Um, she's the main host you, Ashley. for, for um, yeah, Ashley, for the ATL Mix. Um, unfortunately, she's not able to come in and join us, but she was, uh, I was showing the comment, oh, y'all can't see me, I'm touching the computer. She was saying it's 9 p.m. on, um, it's 9 p.m. on Fridays. So, so you uh, that's your time, then. <laughs> I'm touching, I'm pointing and touching the, like, like y'all can't see that. So that's 9 p.m. She was saying she, hey, she can't talk right now. Get on here to talk. Uh, so, yeah. So anybody have anything else they want to say before we get ready to get up out of here? We went a little over, but that's fine. Like I said, it's our first show. Sin, you look like you want to talk. Go ahead. I do. So officially, we are launching Friday, right? Yes. That's the official launch. Oh, right, Don. Well, Thursday will be our show. So um, Thursday so will be Thursday. So technically, Thursday will be the first day of the official launch of this coming week. Okay. Uh, and everything else. So it'll be Thursday night with Coffee Talk Radio, Friday night with ATL Mix, and then Sunday we have both your show as well as the Less Boys. Okay. All I have to say is everybody, please support all of the shows. Okay. Absolutely. You're at home. Even if you're not at home, you might be at work sitting at a desk. Listen, support. That's free. Support is free. That's mm -hmm. all I have to say about that. Right. And for those, if you won't be at home, you will have the option to uh, listen to it via the LE radio app. You will have the option to listen that way as well. If you don't have if you are unable to uh, visually watch us. Yeah. So that's pretty much it, people. We appreciate those that tuned in. Um, so now that we know this is it looks good to me. It looks yep. good to me. So this is the beginning. So uh, we'll see y'all on. I'll see y'all on Thursday. Yeah. See you on okay. Sunday. Shy yeah. City Cafe, ain't that sexy? Shy City Cafe, right? Okay. <laughs> HBO Mix, Coffee Talk. Yeah, I like the names. I, I really like yes. the names. So, yeah, doing something. But like I said, uh, Shy City Cafe is looking for a co-host, and we want that host to be in Chicago. If you didn't know, Shy City, that's representing my shit city, where I'm from, and they'll be, you know, covering stuff that happens in Chicago in that community up there. So we definitely- and Miscellaneous, so- Right, you have to be, be in Chicago. Every show is gonna be a surprise, okay? Right, you have to be in Chicago. It's a sexy show, but you have to be in yeah. Chicago. Um, coffee talk, you don't. Les boys on. Um, <laughs> that's just for the whole time. If you want to be a guest, they don't have to live in Chicago. Oh no, they can be a guest. I'm just letting them know they don't. Yeah, for a guest or you want to be interviewed or you have a business, you don't have to live in Chicago. Just the host. So, anybody interested in being a host, they told you the contact information. Yes. This is going to be committed. Right. If you have a music video that you want played on here, um, we could all show if you're an artist, we could play music videos, um, share your music video while we are live and interviewing you. We can share and promote videos. Um, if you're a poet, we are looking to bring back the poetic soul artistry with Lady Poetry. So if you're a poet, um, I mean, we, we ready. We're here for it in 2021. 
And again, that email address to send all of your information again is leradio2010 at gmail.com. Again, that's leradio2010 at gmail.com. All right. Yep. So that's pretty much it. Just make sure, again, you go and join us at coffeetalk.com, and you'll get all the time and updates to keep um, updated or get more details. Reach out to us, whatever. If you want to inbox any of us, you can inbox us. And next time, I'll know to do the same thing. So that's pretty much it, people. Good night. Right. Have, Have a good night. night. Have a good night, everyone. All Thank right. you so much for everybody joining. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Huh? We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I hit air broadcasting. <laughs>